Welcome back everyone to another tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the two key procedure alongside the ANOVA test. So this is what happens after the ANOVA test has been performed and you have rejected the null hypothesis. The two key procedure is also called the studentized range test and it is appropriate for pairwise comparisons, but it doesn't handle general contrast. That's when you have more complicated comparisons of the means. However, the good thing is that this procedure has better statistical power than the chef's procedure, which I've shown you in a previous video. Also in a previous video, we looked at this example and from the example, we created an ANOVA table. Here we're actually discussing drugs A, B, and C and seeing how fast they relieve headaches. And these are the values that we were given in the question. And from that, we created this table and we determined that we have to reject the null hypothesis, which said that all the means are the same. In addition, in that video, we calculated the mean and standard deviation, and that's summarized in this table. Now we need to find out which of these three drugs, drugs A, B, and C, are most significantly different from one another. Now we learned how to do this already with the CHEF procedure, but the two key procedure has its benefits as well. With this procedure, order of how you compare the means matters. The first comparison of treatments uses the largest sample mean compared with the smallest sample mean. So take a look at our table that we have up here. The largest sample mean happens to be this one and the smallest happens to be that one. So the first comparison will be with drug A and drug C. Once you've compared these two groups, if the test is significant, whereby there is a difference and you accept the alternative hypothesis, then you continue and the next comparison of treatments deals with the largest sample mean compared to the second smallest sample mean. This cycle goes on until you reach a non-significant difference. Once that happens, then the test stops. With that being said, let's begin. We will begin with drug A and drug C because this one has the largest mean and this one has the smallest mean. So we'll start with A and C, or groups one and three. The null hypothesis, just as with the chef's procedure, is that the mean of the population for drug A is equal to that of drug C. And the alternative is the opposite, that they're not equal. If we end up rejecting the null hypothesis, then we continue with the test. The next step, once we've created our hypothesis, is to select a test statistic. And for that, we'll be finding Q sub K. That's found by taking the difference of the means, the largest with the smallest, and then dividing it by the square root of the mean square within over the number of individuals in that group. So in case that's too much to process, let me show you what I mean. We'll take 33 minus 20, over the square root of the mean square within this number, 20.833, and we'll divide it by the number of individuals in that group, was five. Let's go ahead and find this observed test statistic. We'll plug these values into our calculator, 33 minus 20, divide that by the square root of 20.833 by five we get 6.3687, 6.3687. And this is going to be compared with a value that we find in a table. The critical value is found by taking the number of groups in total. The number of groups in total is K, we'll represent it as K, and it was three. You see how you have drugs A, B, and C? Alongside the degrees of freedom within, and for that, we'll be using this table. We found out in a previous investigation that it was 12. Here's what the table looks like, and we'll be using 0 0.05 significance. That's our alpha. K was three, right here. And we go down to 12, and we'll use that first value because the second value is for 0 0.01. We're using 0 0.05, so it's that first value, 3.77. 3.77. Q alpha is less than QK. This is greater than that number. 
When QK is greater than Q alpha, you reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Let me write that down. Reject null. This means that we have to go another cycle in the two key procedure because we are rejecting this in favor of that one. Now we compare the largest mean with the second smallest, which was this one. So we'll be comparing A with B. Let me do that alongside the problem. A and B this time. The good thing about these tests is that you get to use a lot of the same elements as before. So I can just copy this down again and simply change this C with B. And similarly over here. The same formula but the numbers will be 33 minus 26 over the square root of the same denominator. Let's use our calculator. 33 minus 26 divided by the square root of 20.833 by 5. That gives us 3.4. 3.4, and let's be specific here, 3.4. 4, 3. We'll be using the same critical value, which was 3.77. This number is greater than KQ. And if it's greater, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we'll be accepting this one in favor of the alternative because we have insufficient evidence to conclude otherwise. Because we have rejected the null hypothesis, this means that the only groups that were significantly different were groups A and C, and that's consistent with what we did in our previous video where we learned that the only difference using the Chefsis procedure was between groups 1 and 3, which are groups A and C. And there you have it. That is how to perform the two-key procedure after the ANOVA test.